Hey everybody, it's Digibro and Econ. Hello. Why are you here? Huh? Why am I here? Yeah. Why I'm he- I'm here because I'm bringing an endangered animal to a wildlife refuge. Okay. What's it called? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be moving abroad to teach English pretty soon. Mm. So I was like, I have this huge collection. I have anime and manga stuff. And once I leave, they're all gonna go into my mom's attic and get eaten by silverfish. So I might as well take them to someone and somewhere where they will be appreciated and protected and kept from all, you know, all the fucking bugs that would eat it otherwise. Somewhere where they will look at home. Yeah, exactly, right? So that place is my house. But yeah. uh, I figured why not show off all the shit that you're bringing here because you have fun, esoteric collection stuff. People love collection videos. <laughs> I, uh, I try to make them, but they take forever. And uh, I don't know if we're going to get through everything you brought, but we'll at least try to get through some of the most interesting stuff, yeah, I guess. Yeah. What's it called? Like, this is the mother of all unboxing videos. I think we unloaded, like, 500 pounds of stuff. Yeah, well, let's break into our first box all then. Right. Okay. So this first box is mostly some doujins, some official um, storyboard just... cells and whatever. Right yeah. off the top. Right off the top. Turn A Gundam Cell. Yeah, that, that's from the final episode where the Turn A and Turn X fight. And um, Mr. Little Pretty Boy over here, like the, the mechs break down and they get out of their mechs and he pulls out a fucking katana and runs at a, uh, what's his face, Jim? Was it the antagonist <coughs> in Turn A? The guy, the guy who looked like a J-pop star? I don't remember. Yeah. And with the long blue hair and he was in the Turn X. I remember the... Harry Ord. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. But like that's the char guy. That's that's yeah. not that's not the villain. You know, the villain's barely ever the char guy nowadays. You know? Yeah, yeah, because they realized Char was too popular. That's I mean, the whole... Char was never truly a villain. He was always. Did you watch Char's Counterattack? I mean, okay, not never truly a villain. <laughs> I just mean he didn't start as necessarily a villain. No, no, I, like he's been an. I mean, now he's a like a complete sociopath. Now that he has a backstory yeah. and everything, yeah. Um, What's it called? No, they they realize how popular Char was. There's also on the other side of that. Oh yeah, the, uh, it's the original. Um, yeah, put it put it up to the lens. It's the original Genga that they used for the cell. What's it called? They they'll usually package these with cells and stuff. Um, you can open it up if you want. I I'll open it up. I was originally gonna get this frame, but you have to get these framed in like special UV resistant stuff. What is this from? Huh? This is a, Geki, uh, a Genga, or was it an original sketch? Um, it, it's a key frame from uh, Azumanga Daya. It's Osaka, see? That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, there's another one behind it, too. Yeah, I'm going to go in there. You uh, Show the one you just opened up. Oh, you're put, you already put it back. Yeah, I already put it away. This is this is a cell from Giant Robo, the day the Earth stood still. I, take a, I can't remember which episode this was from. I think, was it three? Like... What's it called? When when the hero? I this, can't believe you have a giant Robo cell. That's fucking sick. Uh, this is a birthday present. From, um, you have like the like two of the most like M cells like imaginable. Like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's it called? Uh, I missed out though. There, they the guy was also right, selling. The, huh? right, what is the proper way to handle this? It's kind of stuck to the lum cell underneath it, and I don't yeah. want to damage a fucking Rusei Yatsura cell. Oh shit! This is actually stuck. It's it's been there for so long. Ooh, fuck. I'm not. My hands are off of it. If anything happens, it's his his fault. Historical artifact here. Okay, damage is minimal. Damage is minimal. Point is, damage get, is minimal. <laughs> point is, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get this shit in a frame. Otherwise, dumb shit like this happens. Yeah. And well, also, we'll and line also, it up differently this time. Like, huh? don't put it, put that in the front on the it, plastic, and then put the other one not on its. Dude, plate. this thing is forty years old at this point. All right, well, show it off. Show it off. It's a, it's another cell from Urasai Yatsura. What's it called? It's a great cell. It's a fucking gorgeous cell. And in this cell, you actually get to see a lot of how cells were produced because this is actually two separate layers of plastic. Uh-huh. The line work, the what's it called, black lines are actually on top, and the color is actually sandwiched. Um, uh-huh. a one layer is right here. You know how cells are in layers, right? Yeah. So the green layer is in the middle here. But on the back side, if you, if you look at the back side, what's it called? Is the, it possible to, like, 
fray the huh? layers, or are they like? Are, are you gonna take this apart irre <laughs> irre irreparably and like destroy this I didn't goddamn know that cell? They, I didn't know that cells were like stapled together, multiple. Yeah, uh, that, that that's how they keep them in place, right? So the the line work is on the very front. The green is in the middle, and then the um, beige color for skin is on the back. Amazing. Yeah. Really should get this frame. This shit is falling apart. This is probably Dude, worth like well, several hundred okay, dollars now. Put it in a position where its face is on the is not touching the paper. That Honestly, this shit should go in a museum. Like, donate it to an anime museum. I'm not giving them my money. Oh, then sell it. Um, what's this? Okay. Nothing else is going in this this time. It's yeah. just gonna go by itself yeah. in the bag. You should, in some way, preserve the Osaka as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's your responsibility now. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this video will serve as a great way to document things. Is this things. from Hibike Euphonium? Yeah, this is from but Hibike Euphonium. All right, show it, show it, put it okay. in the lens. Um, a friend of mine was at uh, Kiwani Studios, so and he picked up a collection of. These aren't the original cell or um, original Genga, because nowadays it's all digital. But these are prints yeah, on. Get it really up in there so that it, yeah, yeah, but these are a series of original art prints from um, EBK Euphonium, um, and and they sold it in this gorgeous folder too. What's it called? It's hard to even make out that one because the lines are so thin. I mean, this is the... upside down. Yeah, but it was, it was the girls playing. Um, Playing brass and right so these are like printings of the yeah of the because because everything's digital now right right ever since they switched to digital coloring composition they didn't have to put in that much effort like the goddamn we say Yatsura cell where everything's fucking stable together ah <coughs> uh, there aren't any cells of Kumiko's feet here <laughs> and that's like all anybody watches the show for. Oh, but there is that one really gay scene, remember? Yeah, yeah, of course. The the one that gives you false uh false impression of what the show's nature is. And there are some still delusional like Yuri, you know, Yuri fans who think that the show's going to go full les. Well, I mean, in the novels doesn't she like end up with the guy? Oh, this this is a um build your own metronome that they included with the thing. What for what purpose? To build your own metronome. I guess. Oh, okay. Okay, now I understand. I had to think about like what a metronome is in this context that it could be made of a. It's not a fun. I mean, I guess it's not a functional a... metronome. It's just decoration, right? But. Right, what is this now? Oh, that's the folder it came in. Oh, beautiful a premium keyframe. Yeah. But. Cool. Yeah, this video will serve as great documentation, so that if you try to, I can, I can check my collection when I come back yeah. <laughs> against this and make sure Digi didn't steal anything like that. Uh, fucking Euro sorry, Yatsura so. cell or whatever. I know some people who are gonna be hit me up like Digi. You need to send that to me for the good of that cell. Like I don't trust you with it. You need to send it to me. Econ is too trusting. I don't know why he would put these things in the hands of Digi. I did. I did just. Man. I did just see your closet where you keep all your shit. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the first. Uh, it, it's the beginning of the stuff I purchased from um, Josh Dunham of Wave Motion Cannon. Um, he's having a kid, so what? So he decided he wanted to raise some money, and he sold a large portion of his collection to me. Um, and we haggled a little. I got him to let go with like some really good stuff for really, really cheap. So feels good. So what is this? This is a collection of storyboards. This is actually the complete storyboard collection I gotta show from um, uh, The Girl Who Left Through Time, uh, the Hosoda movie. Yeah. And in it, you have all the original drawings that became keyframes. You have comments and notes and things like camera movements, pans and stuff written out. Um, they used to release series like this mostly for Miyazaki movies. But um, nowadays they've been doing more with like Hosoda, Shinkai, stuff like that. Because the anime movies are becoming a bigger and bigger part of the industry. They're probably bigger now than TV anime. TV anime is on the decline, but anime movies are quickly growing. So they're, these collectible like production materials are a lot more valued nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's gorgeous. I wish there were more. I I, I want to. I you wish there were more? Oh, okay. More stories. Here's Summer Wars. Oh, that's the one I want. That's the one you want. I want to <coughs> study it because uh, I want to try doing storyboarding. 
Oh, you should. What's it called? Spoiler alert, in another box, there's a whole book on storyboarding. Unfortunately, I can't draw, and Mamoru Hosoda can clearly draw quite well. I assume he storyboarded this. Well, yeah, but you don't need to know how to draw to storyboard. Uh, no, I know. Uh, Anno, Anno can't draw for shit. He storyboarded. Anno can't draw? What are you talking about? Uh, well, I mean... Yeah, but obviously the, the he one, can draw, the, but his, the his, his storyboard. Okay, don't, don't put this on top of the Urusai Yatsura cell. You're gonna, sorry. you're gonna damage it more than it's already damaged. <laughs> uh, stay in my. Thing. I'm just thinking about his storyboard for the Ana for the Ava OP, which is very goofy looking. That is true. Sometimes storyboards do tend to be go- not everybody's like Hosoda or Miyazaki. Right. Miyazaki. Um, or Satoshi Kon. Yeah, Satoshi Kon Miyazaki, people like that. They're very well known for basically drawing keyframes as the storyboards, right? Right. Um, another famous, uh, Kurosawa also did stuff like that. He like mm-hmm. drew very detailed pictures and like Alfred Hitchcock, lots of film directors like doing that. But then you have people like Shinbo. And I'm not sure if you've seen a Shinbo storyboard before. I haven't. Um, I, I don't have Is any. Is it stick figures? It's worse. It's oh. circles. Good. They That's are circle. They are circles with the character's name on it. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> I can draw a better storyboard than that. So. Yeah. so so I think what he really should have done is he should have worked on the adaptation of Nining Shinobu Den. You remember mm, with the yeah. ball guy? Yeah. Uh, on Sokomaru. Yeah, yeah, on Sokomaru. Uh, this is the Miyazaki one I was talking about. This is Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Of the Valley of the Wind. Of the Valley of the Wind? I don't know what the English title is. Okay, well, whatever. This is Nausicaa and... This is the Miyazaki storyboard, and like I was talking about, you can see just how detailed he draws this stuff. Yeah, we'll these are these, the these are basically keyframes right here, right? Put it closer. These are basically keyframes you know, with this much detail, and he writes descriptions on them and some pretty um, what's it called? Actually, some pretty entertaining notes here and there. Like here, it's like these guys are firing; it should be loud. Uh, got the behemoth oh i have also got the i, I got look at the size of this fucking thing this there's is two of them there's two of them these are the collected um keyframes from all of monogatari this is probably one of my favorite things that i own it is my treasure it's one of the greatest things that's been made yes like, it is. why isn't there one of these for every show um of worthy? It, it is oishi's genius at full display and it reveals this one appears to be the backgrounds yes that that one is the backgrounds um, and it lets you get a look into the composition and stuff like that because I think, um, in term, Baki's greatest strength is its composition, cinematography, and editing, as well as its use of color, all of which is very much explored in this stuff. And it also reveals a lot of stuff you didn't think about or realize about the show, like the fact that um, the panty shot. You remember the iconic panty shot in yeah. like episode one or two? Yeah, it's actually it's really the only first like shot of like the entire. No, show. no, not the first shot. The the shot where um Sandra Gahara is pulling up her panties. Oh yeah, 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 the animation. Yeah, it's a very famous sh- shot, but like in in the keyframes, it's only like a page or two. So like they improvise most of it. <laughs> it's uh, isn't that Imamura Rio? Did he do that? Yes, he did. Actually, the, actually, uh, no, I, I got it wrong. What's it called? The scene was short, but they actually did so many storyboards for it. Holy shit! This is like ten pages worth, or like forty keyframes worth of the fucking panty scene that took like two seconds. Look at this. Look at this shit. <laughs> What's it called? You gotta put it up in the camera for them to look at. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find the page. Right here, right here. It's like a single motion with like a billion different keyframes. Oof. I think you've got something else, I guess. But uh, yeah, these books are, well, they cost me about a hundred bucks each, but uh, it was well worth it because for this is- For each box, you mean. Yeah, for each box. But it was well worth it. This this is still like- one Oh, I can put whoever I want in the front of it. Yeah, but you have to do it in order, man. It's all about doing it in order. No, it's about putting best girl in the front. Which is best girl? I don't know. I'm looking at all of them. Well, this one's just got a tree on it. So we're going to put, uh, we're going to put fucking, we're going to put uh, the final boss. Nadeko? Yeah. Final boss of season two. Ah, uh, fuck season two. All, all of the monogatories after Bake were shit. Once Oishi left the project, it was like, okay, well, this is crap now. You know, and then Eta- Eta- two hundred dollars Eta- worth of booklets of all the key animations. Yes, of the original show. This is only a Fake. Okay. Yeah, like, like I'm not gonna. Fu- yeah, this is only a Fake, but it's all the key frames. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna buy shit of Nisei. I don't want to look at Itamura's dirty, dirty work. The guy who can't understand that colors have to be complementary. That you can't stick red, blue, and green to a scene together and make it look good. Fuck's sake. Go to art school. Read a book on color theory. Fucking hack. 
But what about the Shinobu bath scene? Huh? Ah, oh, that scene was terrible. There are so many cuts, and none of them make sense. Okay, why, why, why so many goddamn Dutch angles? It, it was just an excuse to show off why, lowly feet. Why no? Why not a Dutch angle? There you go. Because you don't want to be fucking Battlefield Earth. All right. <laughs> oh my god, that movie is so bad. Let's move on. What's next? <laughs> What's next? Um, this is Pat Labor. Pat Labor. It's the uh, original collector. I'm gonna be watching this very soon for my. Uh, my oh, you can use this. You can use this. It's the DVD. Uh, yeah, and I mean, you're leaving it with me, so yeah. yes, I can definitely use this. Well, All how right. much of it is it? Like, what? Oh, it's got books in there. Yeah, this is the. So is this just the first movie? Uh, yeah, it's the limited collector edition of the first movie. Um, you but have got... one disc of the movie and then one disc of extras. Um, what's it called? It also comes with the entire original storyboards by Bamoro Oshii. This is the main reason I got this, or rather, this is the main reason I bought this off. Um, Josh, oh, the interesting here is that the storyboards are actually translated this time. Oh, this, sick. the directions, the cuts, the pans, you know, like this one says, oh, that, not me. like this one says, Asuna's um, POV view shifts from one skyscraper to another. Okay, Oshi was a lot less concerned about detail than uh, than the guys we just showed because these storyboards are pretty bare bones, like. You know, some some Thanos he just leaves completely blank, and he's like, "Okay, this is what needs to happen," but you know, uh, I, I'm too lazy to draw it. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny, and that's like, like a, a general guide. Yeah, like with interviews, interviews and stuff. Yeah, you know. this is sick. I'll definitely read all of this. Yeah, you could Especially you, you could I'm read it while watching. Going to watch this yeah. movie. All right. It'll give me tons of shit to talk about when we do the fucking podcast on content. Go Canton? subscribe to Canton. Was, oh, I thought it was content. Canton. But it's K-H-A-N. K-H-A-N-T-E-H-N-T. Canton. So it's content, like like the Wrath of Khan. Canton. Like William Shatner wasn't screaming, Can! Can! He should have been. He clearly was in the wrong. All right, we got Dojins coming in. Uh, oh, but you first, got a well, us. This is, this, is, this is what I got for contributing $200 to the Little Witch Academia. Um, oh, sick. What's it called? Kickstarter. Um, Kickstarter. It's all the backgrounds, it's the, the the backgrounds, the art, stuff like that. The OVA was so good, but the TV the TV series was good too. But I just couldn't live up to it, you know. Like, well, I mean, the first OVA was like godly. Yeah, this is the all the first OVA. What's it called? Um, it, it actually came with a um, what's it called? Genga, a keyframe from the original too. But the problem is, uh, my mom threw it away. Wait. Oh my god. Yeah. She didn't know what it was. She thought it was just a random doodle I had made. And it was Amanda. It was Amanda on top of the broom in that one scene. Ugh. It was, it was really fucking pissy. But um, this is part of the reason I'm bringing this shit over. Because I'm afraid, like, you know, this is where yeah. Sayatsu is just yeah, going to get I've, thrown no, away. Now I fully point. understand. Yeah, my fear. All right, so now we've got some Toho Dojin. What is this? I have no goddamn idea. Um, this is part of the collection that was left to me. When I entered college, there was a Japanese guy who was just graduating. And so he just popped by the anime club um, on the first day of school, or not the first day of school, the first day of club. Okay, well, I, I do not know what this is, but I love it. So I'm just going to flip through this while you Yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. But um, yeah, he had this huge collection of doujins and stuff, and he just left it all there. And he was like, first come, first served, because I'm going back to Japan and I can't take all this shit with me. So I was like, everybody else, they, nobody knew what the fuck this shit was. But I was like, okay, there, there are some like rare doujin in here and rare manga and that was like and weird stuff and like weird this. stuff what's it called the, the, what? literally what is this Konpurito Buku of Ore Shin Dabansho Shinra Bansho is like a media franchise in Japan it's like a video game or something I don't know but there's a lot of porn of it which I fact to sometimes uh, speaking of porn I cannot you, you, I cannot you, 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 show you the front of this. And you, you could just use your hand to cover the nudity part, right? I guess. Uh, yeah, it's the girl from uh, Tiger, Tiger and Bunny. Bunny. It's the Shindle Dojin. This this one I bought Wait, myself. So this is the this one I bought myself. Uh, this is this is my own. This is the same author who did um, Metamorphosis. Henshin, yeah, Emergence, whatever they call it. The English title is Metamorphosis. Oh, that makes sense. You know, she does. Uh, here we've got a Toho again. Yeah, this guy was really don't into know, Toho. Don't know if it's safe for work. Yeah, it's all. It's, like it's, it's, these are life. safe for work. Most Toho dojins are safe for work. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
this is <coughs> I do not know what this is. Rosa Maiden. Is it? You can't tell? That soon gets it. Oh, I like this art style. Yeah. Um, I don't like it as much inside the book as I did on the cover, but it is... Uh, yeah, it always looks better on the cover. Uh, I don't know this character. What's it called? This this is another Toho Dojin about the canonical Reimu. In this one, she just goes uh, ahead and murders this girl everyone. This thankfully has censored herself, but... Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. In this one, she just goes insane and murders everybody. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is from, from like the late 2000s what when things like Rose and Maiden and Toho oh, were really well, popular. This? It's more Rose and Maiden. I know, but the art style, it's very distinctive. It was um Prime Minister. Oh, whoa. Huh? Look at this. It's fucking cool. It's like an inky kind of style. Oh, yeah. It's really fucking strange to look at a whole page of it. <clears throat> Ooh, this one looks beautiful. I don't know what it is either, though. It's another Toho book. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, this is more of a smoky, artsy Toho book. Let me check the artist. Who is this again? Uh, you tell me. I feel like I recognize this art. I like the cut of this girl's jib. Amida Kuzu. Nope, never heard of him. Oh, we got a Cierno. Cyrano in a, a lonely, beautiful world. This like the all these you said came from that guy in your class, right? Well, not all of these, but a lot of these. These yeah. represent like a really interesting taste. I feel like. Well, it was a pretty popular taste back then, like all the Toho and Rosa Maiden stuff. It, it's well, more he, like he, it's he more like a window into time, right? Interesting artwork, though. Like it's it's definitely not like the stuff that is the most indicative of like what art looked like at the time, you know? Perhaps, but I get the feeling that a lot of it was just chaff, that he kept all the good stuff for himself, and this is just the stuff he couldn't take home with him. Maybe. Uh, I think it's cool. Okay. So... There appears to be Tay is injecting something in their neck. So this is, uh... This is Densha the D. A Dojin oh, series yes. ab ab about Initial D, a fa Initial D fan comic um, with trains. There, there's this very famous meme on the internet back in the day um, called multi track Drifting, where like the guy was drifting with a, <laughs> a train going over both tracks. <laughs> so, you know, the, it, it's a Dojin about in Initial D, except the guys race trains instead of cars. Yeah, I'm trying to find multi track Drifting. Uh, I don't think it's in any of these volumes. Oh, really? I had the volume before, but I lost it. What? You lost I, the only important I, I, one? I, the best one. That was volume one, okay? I believe I left it at a guy named Ken Pradell's house. What's going on here? So, so, fucking Ken, if you're hearing this, that bastard stole my goddamn Densha the D fucking volume one. Fucking. Well, first you lost it, now he stole it. I like how the story changes. Huh? Once you come under scrutiny. The story becomes different. Well, he he was a big anime nerd too, so the fact that I had it when I went in well, and it's fair didn't enough, have as long it when as I came somebody out. who deserves it has it, that's all that truly matters. You sound like the fucking bike cut guy. <laughs> my that? yeah, my the bike cut guy. You know, my bike was stolen today, but I'm I think that whoever was stole it is more happy to have it than I am to lose it. Yeah, sure. So, so, so I guess that's all right. So the total happiness in the world increased, and I'm all right with that. Yeah, that, that's like that's like terrible thinking. What in the world is this nonsense? Honestly, I have no idea. I don't recognize this at all. Neither if somebody watching I. this recognizes it, that'd be great. Um. Oh, this is more Toho. Toho Wisteria Dream. Yeah, pull, pull it open. This is not a book. It's actually a um a one panel thing. Okay, let me explain. This is a, it like pulls open. It's a par paramat. So you've got panoramic. You, you're you're showing them the back. That's the back. The I'm trying to get it all the way open. Oh, yeah. It's so much tohos. You could put this on like a wall or something. That'd be pretty yeah, cool. What do you think I could hang this with though? Because it's kind of heavy. I don't know. I don't know if I could hang it without damaging it. Like a shelf. Yeah, I could put it on a shelf. That could work. I mean, it's got my girls on it. It's got all the fucking 
you know, all the basic bitch Gen 1 shit that I like. (laughs) Basic bitch Gen 1 shit. This is literally the Gen 1 spread of Toho's. It's like everything from Embodiment of Scarlet Devil up through uh, whichever one Kon Pakiyomu was introduced. And that was Perfect Cherry Blossom. It doesn't have Imperishable Night. The first two two? Windows games. Yeah. I didn't realize Yomu was that early. This is another weird Toho doujin. Ooh, I like it. I like this cover. Cool color aesthetic. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Oh, it's it's got... Oh, this is actually really rad. This has some really sick uh, color work. And some 3Ds. These would be like delightful album covers. Yeah, all right. Uh, I would I would watch I would watch like a version of like Show by Rock that had these designs. <laughs> like a Toho Show yeah. by Rock. What are you looking at? Uh, this Show is a rock. this is a Sunred Doujin. Um Oh my I, god. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's obscure. Yeah, right. Here, just show it to You want to hold this one? Yeah, sure. I'll that one. Actually, I don't even know what this one is. I don't recognize any of these characters. Do you? No, I have no idea what the hell that is. Yeah, not sure what this one is supposed to be. What's it called? Like a rhythm game or something? I'm not sure. Uh, there's a swamp thing in here. Oh, the oh, air. that 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 wasn't that 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 was mine. What's it called? I don't know why it was in there, but the swamp thing is mine. <laughs> I love it immediately. Oh shit! There's some real legit fucking hell yeah. That's my fucking. That looks awesome. I've definitely seen this guy's work before. What's his name? I have no idea. I mean, it's on there somewhere. Sasaki Kuruma. Sasaki Kuruma. Sasaki Kuruma. Sasaki Kuruma in 2009. Yeah. Like I said, most of this stuff was um from like a while before I started college. Is Amari Mite Dojin is yeah. in here? <laughs> yeah. Is it Yuri? Is it porn? I don't think so. I think it's mostly uh, comedy. Yeah, it's like more of a comedy. Yeah. It's okay. just comedy, then, Yuri. Uh, we have to go through this weird uh, man face Yukuri fucking Toho book. See what we got in here. So far, they look normal. I think it's a ref- I think it's a reference to some old manga, but I don't get it. Here we go. Here's some man face action. We do not comprehend. Toho, Toko, Gigi, gi, gi, Shoko. Uh, anything else? Was that it for that box? Um, then there's this one random Toho Dojin in there, and that's about it. All right. Well, do you want to show anything from it? It's look interesting. No? That's it for this episode, then. We're yeah. going to do one box per episode. One box per episode? Yeah. Okay. So, see you next time. <laughs> All right. This is box number two, and uh, let's just dive right in and start pulling shit out. So, what the hell is this? This is... Uh, Pyuto Kujaga. Um, it's a manga by the same guy who did, um, uh, what was it, Sexy Commando Gaiden, if you remember? Yes, I know Sexy Commando. Yeah, with Mamura and the super catchy opening. I saw the director at Otakon, and he oh, was really? extremely fascinating. He animated the entire show himself. Really? Like, he animated the whole thing, <coughs> and the only person who would do in-betweens on it uh-huh. was the character designer... I'm trying to make sure I have the name right, but the one who did Higurashi uh, and the anime for Higurashi and uh, hmm. um, uh, fuck, she's done a ton of stuff. Yeah, I, I want to say Satoko Kizuki is her name. I mean, I don't know. I could be I wrong. I have no idea. Um, All I know is that this is a manga by the same guy who did the original, and it's about this um, weird like music teacher who goes around and does weird stuff with the kids. What's it called? It's one of those types of stories, you know. It's like a gag manga. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a gag that poet society sort of thing, you know. All right, so uh, who's this bratty girl? Uh, this is Mozuya Sang Yakujosu. It, it's a manga that's actually being like translated right now. I'm not sure how the translation is. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it's it's a big big like you know big time lowly. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a very sort of different art style. It's not uh, it's not super anime esque. She's got kind of a nose. She, 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 the features are a little bit hard. So the premise of the story is something like you know this girl is tsundere, but here like t- being tsundere is like a widely accepted mental illness. Okay. <laughs> so so the entire thing is treating it like a sickness. So it's like a you know she has to kind of get over it sort of thing. 
So it's it, it's it like seems a very cute, meta. There's yeah, like a lot a, like of a old men twist. in this. Lots of old men. I, I get the feeling the artists used to draw like that you know comic likely. Lotion, but, yeah. I yeah, uh, like uh, definitely little girls with old men who are in like their uh, under shirts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I already have this. <laughs> But now I have it in Japanese, Boogie Pop the manga. Um, this is the 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 artist who did the art of the novels did the manga yeah. version of yeah. the first novel. It's not as good as the first novel just because I mean so much of what's good about it is in the the way that it's written, but like <coughs> it's still uh, the best interpretation of it. It's better than the 2019 anime as a reinterpretation really? of Boogie Pop. I, and I still haven't watched that. It's so. much more faithful. Mm. I mean, for the first, because the anime, the anime adapts like a bunch of the books, mm-hmm. uh, but it doesn't give very much time to each one. So, like, you know, the first book, which I have always upheld as like an individual work that I was extremely a fan of, like beyond it as a series, um, you know, they fucked it up bad in the anime. This is Asano Inio's um, Subarashi Hi- um, Kidi. Um, I've never heard of this one. Yeah, it's this a, a, a what, what a wonderful world um, by Asano. Oh, is this one of his early ones? Right? This is one of his earlier ones. One of his early collections. I think one of his best ones. It's actually been a um, what's it called? A long time since I read this, and I kind of wanna wanna read um, Subarashi Sekai again. Um, what's it called? It's just a, like a, a bunch of like loosely connected stories about like young people who have trouble with their lives, and you know, it's done in a very interesting way. Oh, these you got some of this? Are these, are these the same? No, these, no, are, these the are not. These uh, are unrelated. Yeah, I don't un- know what they unrelated. are. Unrelated. Um, one of them is the second to last volume of Masamune. Um, Masamune Kun's Revenge? Yeah, yeah, which I was... You were really into Masamune I was really into Kun's it, Revenge. and then the final, like, fucking chapter dropped, and I, it pissed me off to no end. Um, this one is Kanajo... Um, what is it? It was, it was Kanajo Mamoru. What, what, is this volume 51? No, no. It, it's, oh, that's part of the title. Yeah, part of the title. Um, I think the English name was like 51 Ways to Save or whatever. It's about like an earthquake in Tokyo and some guy gets stuck with like a Lolita girl and whatever, yada, yada. It's not oh, very good. Amazing. I don't know you why. You have Japanese volume one of Bartender. Yes. This is a very, very cult <coughs> remembered show from the mid 2000s. It, it, also, um, it was the only masculine slice of life show in the 2000s, which is now a much more common genre. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but it was an excellent anime, and the manga is very good too. You know? yeah. I'm going to crack it open real quick. Oh, I do love this one. Though. It's definitely very like, uh, like norm core. Very mellow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just a bartender helping people deal with their lives and shit like that. Um, I don't know what this is. Now, that that is Kaguya sama. That is. Wait. Yeah. Ka- wait, which Kaguya sama? That's a common name of. Things. No, it, it, it's the most famous one. It's Kaguya sama, love is war. Kamiya sama. Oh, uh, okay. Wants, wants to be confessed to. Um, what's it called? Yes, I didn't recognize either of these characters. Yes, the because this this is like volume nine, and by then, like, it's not the main characters on the cover. I it's all the side. Get into this big ass book. Oh, okay. This looks like. <laughs> This is one of my favorites. This is a tome right here. Yeah, this is a book on Disney animation, The Illusion of Life. Uh, it was like made by Ollie Johnston oh, and yeah, this Frank thing Thomas, weighs Ollie like this thing weighs at least like ten pounds. Um, these are like heavy. the old the old men of Disney who kind of you know invented the principles of animation. They made the lolly. <laughs> um, <sighs> but yeah, they no, they were like the most influential animators of all time. They created all this stuff, um, and this this is their book that kind of dissects Disney's processes as, as well as tries to teach you about the principles of animation, you know, like squash and stretch, deformation, exaggeration, etc., etc., etc. This et is the absolute epitome of a um, coffee table book. It is, but it's also a really interesting read. I think every, I think everybody who wants to, like, take animation seriously, whether they want to become an animator or just learn about animation or sakuga or My whatever as tired. a hobby, in just two weeks, <laughs> should read this book. This is, like... One of the best books on animation ever written, I think. Um, oh, it, it has those diagrams that people always cite in uh, yeah, right? in the YouTube videos. The squash and stretch diagram. Um, this is one of Otomo Katsuhiro's art books, you gotta Kaba. You got to put it in the camera. Kaba. Otomo you're Katsuhiro's showing Kaba. You're showing them. Um, what is it? Oh, you know who Otomo is, oh, right? This is, yeah, Katsuhiro Otomo. Yeah. What's it called? The guy who made Akira as well yeah. as a lot of ramen commercials. So this is just one of his books. The a page, I believe. Huh? A page fell out. I think a page. Yeah, a page fell out. Yeah, front. this thing is like dozens of years old. Um, it's beautiful though. It is. It is. It contains interviews. It contains his artwork. 
Is this in English? Um, I believe it looks like it's in English. It's, it's left it. to right. Yeah, yeah, it's English. Um, it's yeah, it concept art from Akira as well as other like science fiction stuff. Oh, this is fucking sick. Okay, hold on. Let me show. Some. I believe. Yeah. These. I believe that was part of a series of commercials he was doing. You know, even when they're not doing anime, you know, Look animators and comic artists and stuff, they gotta eat, so they take That's on jobs like this. That's absolutely amazing. So it's just, <coughs> it's kind of just like a whatever art book. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely read that. That's sick. 1971 to 1989 illustration collection. Yeah. So. All right. That's fucking ill. I love Katsuhiro Otomo. Yeah. Take the art of the Simon and Kirby studio. Like this needs no introduction. Jack Simon, it's Jack's. I mean, it's Jack Kirby. Like, what's it called? Jack. Joe Simon and Jack. Yeah, Joe Simon, and Jack Kirby, Sorry, the famous like Marvel guys, right? Well, yeah, not just Marvel, but the fam- famous, very famous comic artists um, came up with a lot of the aesthetics for Western comics today. Ass. Oh, there's. Oh no, it's actually oh, it's actually cool. comic books. This is like their early work. Oh, like okay. it's actually a complete. Co- you just show it to the guy. It's a co- complete collection of some of their They're early comic books. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. In this big, like these. This is the kind of art that makes sense to have in big size. Yeah. Right. Um, even though this book is so heavy, I would have no desire to read this at all. Okay. Let's so see. fucking brick. Um. <coughs> this is volume one of Mushishi. Yeah, I have this in English actually. I have volume one too. Um, um, but that's the Japanese version. It looks exactly the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> but so I do love the material they use for the cover, though. It's like soft. Yeah, it's like and, a soft green. Yeah, I think they did that for the English release, too. Yeah, but if like, the art is just so gorgeous. What's it go? Look at that shit. Shout out to Del Rey, which is now Kodansha. Or mm. Kat, yeah, Kodansha. Right? Kodansha? Is it? Is that, or what's the name of the <coughs> company that's on the books? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what company op- owns Del Rey uh, nowadays. It's just one of the the big publishing companies. And this is volume one of um, Komi San wa Komi Shou. It's also out in English now. It, it's out in English? Seriously? Yeah, yeah they're already okay. on like volume eight of that in English. Wow. Okay. Well, it was they very really popular in really Japan. Fast. I worked on the cancellations for a little bit, but like, you know. Yeah. You have a tendency, you like, you, you are attracted to these shows where it's like a girl who's kind of, like, she's obviously cute, but drawn in a slightly uncute, slightly more realistic way. I mean, uh, I want to call And she has some kind of, but... like, horrible personality disorder. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not... And she hangs out with a guy at all times. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not actually a big fan of this manga. I actually think it's kind of lame. Uh, well, I, I think... You for... also worked on the other one, though, the Don't Bully Me... Uh... Well, that's very different, because Nagatoro is, uh, what's it called? Nagatoro is like excitable, energetic, and their interactions yeah. are more interesting. Komi, uh, the manga becomes extremely boring and episodic after a while. It's just like, oh, which uh, well, new I character with a pun in their name? I policy of not reading it, good which for I you. had you initially should. developed upon sight. So. And you should you should read Nagatoro though. It's very good. I already have it. I literally am reading it. No, this is this is this is a treasure. This is the first three volumes of um, Tonari Bushino Ateria. What At- is that? Uh, Ateria. Oh, uh, hat, which, yeah. this is also coming Which out. Which had Adelir. Yeah, um, this is a manga I've also scanslated for a while now. This is a passion project for me. Because uh, it's... Fu- hold on, we gotta show Because it's pages. fucking gorgeous. I mean, it's so you, beautiful. You recommended this manga in your video. Five, yeah. like, manga you should fucking read, you dumb motherfucker. What was it called? <laughs> I don't remember. But, like, this manga has some of the I'm great... trying to find some of those crazy panels. It's, yeah, so, some of the best paneling I've ever seen in any manga ever. I think there were some crazy panels in, like, volume two or three. Uh, There's moments where it, like, uh... Where, like, the panels break down and it, you just become enveloped. That's just beautiful. Yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, oh, here's here's a good example, right? What's it called? Look at this. The panel t- transforms into, like, this glowing little globe closet. where the girl is just, you know... Ugh, it's so beautiful. It's very nice. All right, moving on from that because right, 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 no, we've no. already given it a solid recommendation. In a... yeah, yeah, but there's like this one really dope panel. I think is in one of these. Just kind if of you're looking for the big crescent one, that's what I was looking for. I'm, I'm not the big crescent one. I'm looking for the one with the window. Ooh, the I want to know about good. this because it's all red. Is this <coughs> me and the devil blues? Yeah, Oreto Aquilano blues or Bruce. So you were telling me about how. So I, I 
I knew about this manga, and this had this actually was I, I, being. I, I, I have the entire collection right here. It's not just one this, volume. This uh this manga is, is set in America. It was getting released stateside when it was releasing, but it got canceled in Japan. So the guy went and wrote Prison School and wrote it to be like a huge farce. You were telling me this earlier. It, and pre- then what's it called? Th- this was like his like real like life's work, you know. He Yeah, he, I mean this is like a serious drama. Yeah, this is a serious drama about like uh, blues history and like it's drawn Smoky just gorgeously. And bars and it's Southwest. got like these amazing in the 1800s. Yeah, it's got... It's not 1800s. It's like early, oh, 1900s. early 1900s. Yeah, it's blues, right? So, you know... Just an absolutely, absolutely gorgeous manga. Um, but they canceled it, and the creator was apparently really pissed, and so he decided, you know what? I, I, I've I, had it with this industry. I am just going to make the most pandering, stupidest shit and uh, make, get my bread that way, you know? And so he made prison school... And you know, <laughs> which which in a in a fit of despair it became incredibly popular. I just want to really remind everyone yeah. that the the whole page is red. It's really yeah. fucking cool. And the other volumes are different colors too. Oh, but, that's so sick! Yeah. I love it. Yeah, in like a fit of despair, he just like you know, it just became super successful, and he just said, "Fuck it," you know, um, and ended prison school on like a super like. By the way, they all have six 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 on the back, which is metal as fuck. Well, I mean, the story is about a jazz, I mean, a blues singer who, like, trades his soul to the devil, metal goes back to the devil blues, you know. That's all. I don't know Everything goes back to the blues. I don't know shit about that. All rock music. Okay. Uh, These are the first two. No, this is one and four. Um, These are two volumes of Fuwa no Tane, which is a Japanese horror manga. Um, It's a little more subdued, subdued than a lot of other stuff, and not a whole lot of it is translated, I think. But, you know, it's still just really, really interesting about, like, a lot, a lot of weird situations. Um, the thing is, you never actually get to really see the monsters in this manga. You just see, like, people get stuck in weird situations and their reactions to it. it it's almost like Lovecraftian in that sense. But, you know, everybody calls everything Lovecraft nowadays and it loses all meaning. Uh, we've got four volumes of Real, the wheelchair basketball manga by... Uh, uh, Takehiko, Takehito Inoue? <coughs> Is it Hiko or Hito? Uh, Takehiko Inoue? I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, he also did Vagabond, which is fucking awesome. Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk, which is obviously massive. Well, the, the, the funny thing is, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? People at, were begging him to make more Slam Dunk. He's like, fuck no, what's it called? Oh my god, these so- covers are incredible. So he made Real, which was like another basketball manga, and people are like, okay, we love Real now, please make more Real, and then he gives that fun that too. What in the world is this? This, uh, is, this is, what's the title This again? cover in particular, I will go and read this based on this cover. It's like, actually all translated. Oh, uh, fuck, you can find translations. A, it's gorgeous. This is fucking crazy shit. This is uh, Chimoguri Ringo. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Shimo Green Ringo. So Blood Diver Ringo and the Fishbowl Man. That that's what it's it's um full Japanese title. Um this is by what was his name again? It was Abe uh Abe 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 uh, Google be my friend. Uh, Abe. I guess this is a minor spoiler for this volume, but this girl's getting shot in the neck. Oh no, that that's a big spoiler. <laughs> that's a big spoiler, okay. Uh, this is Abe Yoichi. Oh, how could I forgot Abe Yoichi? I love that artist. Uh, there's only two volumes. Okay. Um, this oh, is Abe. So that is actually a this huge is spoiler. this is Abe Yoichi's uh, magnum oh, opus, okay. sort of like he spent nine years doing this. Oh, it, fuck, it ended just a couple of years long. ago. Yeah, for something this short. Um, well, it's because he did crazy like cross hatching to the whole. Yeah, thing. the art. Did you ever read that article? There was this dude who was a comic artist who said like things that I will like uh, take you know going forward into my next comic and like basically the gist of it was that he had spent like too much time. seven years on this comic because he'd had this crazy hatching style that he like he was like super uptight about upholding the whole uh-huh. way through but then when he saw how long it took he was like if i keep going this way i will only be able to get done like five things before exactly. i die and i have way more than five so, ideas so this was know? a monthly manga he spent a lot of time on it eventually um the mag he went through like two magazines and the- finally the magazine was like you know, fuck you. We can't take any more. What's it called? End this goddamn manga so we can put something else in this slot. You know, you keep taking hiatuses and shit. So what is this hidden in this? Book? So even though this manga has like some of the 
best art and some of the best characters and just an incredible story and a heart-wrenching like finale it ends on a bit of a rushed note and it feels a little unsatisfying that way because of the fact that they were like well just fucking get it over with right so it really could have used one more volume but it, it's just an exceptional manga um you're gonna be a little heartbreak broken upon ending the reading i mean reading the ending not ending the reading but um okay this is that one that looks like Yoshitoshi Abe drew it. It is Yoshitoshi Abe. Um, oh, okay. This is Yoshitoshi Abe's Slice of Life, Yoshika Ryushika, which is, um, what's it called, like his Yotsuba ripoff. Um, I just thought uh, somehow I convinced color. myself that it wasn't actually him because I didn't believe it was real. Yeah. When I saw this on and uh, A. What's it called? It's gorgeous. You gotta hold it really, yeah, really into close. the camera. Like, there oh, there go. we go. Like... It's like his own version of Yotsuba with a slightly more mischievous girl. And you want to know what the cool thing about it, this is? What? what? What are you trying to show me? You are not putting it in the camera very well at all. Yeah. Oh, uh, the signature? Yeah. Yeah, this is... This... I have a bunch of signed shit by Yoshitoshi Abe. Yeah, this well. is a signed copy from Yoshitoshi Abe. I got um, back in 2011. We've got five Japanese volumes of Watamote. I don't think that needs any explanation. <laughs> well, you know, actually, no, I, I have more than that. Oh. Uh, you, you missed two of them. Uh, yeah, I, I, I bought them for the thing, you know. Back when, like, you know... Actually, I have more volumes of that. Uh, these are just the more recent ones. I, I bought a lot of them when like it was first getting popular, and I wanted to support it. There was like a whole thing going on, eh? and people were buying like multiple copies. Um, what is this thing? Huh? This? Oh, it's like a promotional thing they have for I, other manga uh, in the same magazine and stuff. Yeah, Square Enix. It, it was an Enix. Um, this is just Solanine, which I do already have because Wada sent it to me. It is the English release, so that's normal. I've done a manga Mondays about it. If you want to hear my <coughs> thoughts, what is that? That looks. This sick. I actually have no idea. This is part of the um, the collection that was left to me by my senpai in college. Um, I good taste senpai. Is yeah, what we're calling it. good taste senpai with all the Toho shit. Um, frankly, I'm not really sure what it's about. It's some kind of like artsy shojo. It like some kind of old school artsy shojo. It looks fucking sick, honestly. Uh, bro, uh, like a light. Uh, where do you go? There you go. Okay. Man, I don't want to do give wanna, this. Do you want to? Do you want to say anything in this video? <coughs> no, Jimmy doesn't know shit about oh, manga. Yeah, we're fucking. Uh, he's doing his collection. Oh. I think this is a door into summer, isn't Kodi it? Kodi no Is it? Because I know there's a scene just like this in a door into summer. So look it up real quick. Uh. Hey guys. It would be Natsu e no Tobida, right? I came here right at the end when they were done with all this stuff. So it's like, well, Maybe it's from the same know. author. This definitely is, if nothing else, extremely similar to A Door into Summer. Maybe so. it's the same artist. Um, yeah, because that was Takemiya, right? So. Oh, yeah, it is. It, this is Kaze. This is Kaze Tokino Uta. Um. Yeah. So it's from the same artist. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's also about, like... Um, it act, apparently, it took nine years for her to publish it because of the fact that uh, it had so much gay shit. A lot of nine years going on here. What's, uh, what's with these uh, these weird-looking samurai dudes? Okay, this is this is a novel oh, version of these are probably my favorite manga of all time, which is Takemitsu Samurai by uh, Tayo Matsumoto. Um, <coughs> uh, it's about this... Okay, so uh, it's, it's the same. Cre it's the creator of ping pong, right? It's the yeah. creator of ping pong. He's got a lot of stuff published. Yeah, yeah, but um, what's it That that was a samurai manga he did, and it's wonderful. Um, I think I have a couple copies not in this box though. Um, oh, Ranma. Ranma, yeah. Yeah, papa, yeah, papa, and then I have this. Uh, well, the funny thing is, I have the English release, which is volumes like, I think it's like one and a half volumes or something. Maybe it's two volumes. I'm not sure. I guess I could find out through this. But it definitely goes farther than this volume one does. I'm not gonna show Ranma's titties <laughs> to the camera. Oh, this yeah, is I'll pretty show cool. You. This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite frames. Remember, Ranma. hey, Digi, you, you know about Toho, right? Uh, you remember yeah, that? You, rem you rem yeah. Do I know about Toho? Rem do you hey, rem Digi, you know about Toho, right? <laughs> do you remember that uh, OVA that uh, UFO yes. table did? Yes. Do you want to see the storyboards? 
Absolutely. Show it to the camera, bro. This is a collection of the storyboards and key animation used on the UFO, UFO table, um, what's it called? Slash Toho Project crossover. Bam. Just a bunch of settings, storyboards, stuff like that. I think I got this back in the Anime Expo. I went to... I'm definitely going to study Yeah, yeah, the, the Anime Expo we went to together. It's pretty beautiful. It is. It's, it's pretty, like, uh, it's pretty filled in. <coughs> Uh, anything else you got hey, in that box? See. Oh, Wait. there's a trigger bucket here. A signed one. Who's it signed by? Oh, this is the this is the this is my um, Yoshinari signed trigger buck. What's it called? I got it back at that anime, anime expo. Anime expo. Yeah, I complete the stage. I completely forgot about this. What's it called? <laughs> I I've been looking for this there's for like all, literally there's years. More than just Yoshinari. Yeah, there's a, there's also there. Waka, the producer, as well as Tatum, the translator. Okay. What's it called? Tatum, what? You didn't have a. Uh, you didn't have uh, what? Am I she? Guy, no, yeah. uh, Shigeto Koyama. Oh no no no. He wasn't at that one. No. Okay. <laughs> but um, man, I've been looking for that trigger bug for years, man. Well, it's in your fucking Toho uh, storyboard book. So. Yeah yeah, I guess that's where it was. I guess I put it there for safekeeping, and I guess I didn't lose it. But right, is this good? The gods lie. <laughs> you see this all the time, and I I hate the way they brand this with these like. The, the way they do the the simple text on the covers. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of either. Books. I do not like that aesthetic. I actually think it's all right. Um, what's it called? Vertical is always pretentious. There. Yeah, vertical is always pretentious, but they also do good translation work. Like, um, yeah, I mean, I respect what they bring over. I I think there's some problems with it. I think the story might have been a little bit dragged out and stuff, but um, overall, it's pretty solid. Um, what's it called? I really like the act two. Is in it this just story. this one book? Yeah, it's just one book. Okay. Um, well, the ending might have been. I'll read it. The ending might. The ending might have been a little rushed, but you know. Oh, and this is a copy and, uh, of Yuru Camp. Yeah, we all know you stand Yuru Camp real hard. You had a whole video about it, right? Actually, I bought this copy more or less just to complain about it because. Oh. Um, I, I was about I was the English release or. Yeah, the English release. Okay. Um, because well, you bought it to complain about it. Yes. Did you make a video to complain no. about it? Because if you had done that, you could have made it a tax write-off if you made any profit Seriously? off of that video. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, if if you started if you start making videos where you like hold up your merchandise and talk about it, you can write it off as a expense for the video. No. So, um, but you know, I'm just but the reason this was to everybody out there. But the reason was like um, Eurocap had an amazing translation done by like actual camping enthusiasts. Yeah. So I just bought this because I was getting into an argument with somebody on like Twitter about like oh official translations compared with fan translations. I was like, yeah, I bought the official translation. It doesn't have the stupid camping notes at the very end, and because like for the translation they would do like five pages of notes. Um, exactly what the locations they're talking about and the kind yeah. of camping tools and stuff and it was very educational but I think that's it for the box alright we'll move on to the next box box number three box number three. Oh my god you have the rec manga I have the rec manga I have the rec manga we're both so fucking off key na, na. no you're off key and you're I'm fucking off, you're off, off key. key too no okay, you this, are just a fool this is a collection of Interviews with Hideaki Anno that oh, um, I bought off of Josh Dunham. Um, what's it called? For unfortunately, none of them are translated. He gave oh, he uh, gave them to me. Hoping, I would read the whole thing if it was. Translated. Yeah, hoping I would be able to translate it, but you know, before I could do anything with it, yada 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 yada, you know. <coughs> now it's your no, responsibility to translate this. them. How the fuck am I going to do that? I don't know, but it's... I can't read kanji, and there's no furigana. Yeah, it's a book of translations. I'm a baby in a big kid pool. I'm a baby in a big kid pool. But yeah, it's mostly text. There's not. I'm yeah. showing like the images on the camera, but there's not a ton of them. This is the second volume of Mad Bull 34. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. I don't need to be able to read this. I will read it anyway. Oh, look <coughs> at that. Look at that fucking gorilla right there. Right away. Mad Bull. Mad, Mad Bull. Bull. <laughs> Mad Bull. Oh my god, look at this. I'm so fucking hyped to have Mad Bull in my house. All right, show me the next thing. Okay, this is Sekito Elegy, which is a romance Whoa. manga about working class people, you know, construction workers basically doing like blue collar jobs. It is one of the like cutest and sweetest and funniest things you'll ever read. It's probably like it's probably like my best pick for like best rom com of all time or something along those lines. Like, you know, it's just Mad so Bull straightforward, so simple, but so cute. What was this uh, called? It's called Sekito Elegy. 
Okay. Pretty good. I was enraptured with Mad Bull. Oh, this is this is like my favorite manga, one of my favorite manga of all time. What is it called? What do you think? Uh, ping pong. Yes, this is the original. What's it called? The the tankoban of ping pong, and they come in these like tiny little books, and the art is just so gorgeous. You know, it makes the anime look bad by comparison. What they go like, and the anime was freaking great. Look at the paneling, God. Well, that's why they copied the paneling well, in yeah. the uh, animation. But it just looks so much better in manga form. Actually, reading this manga is one of the things that really made me reconsider like the full page scrolling of like manga websites and translation. Yeah. Because when you read ping pong, it just reads so much better in the, this two page format when you're reading like right to left, right? Mm -hmm. But like when you're reading manga online, it's always like full page scrolling up down. I'm just like, no, this manga was designed to be read in this direction. So. Right. I mean, the pages are small enough that it would fit on a digital display. Yeah, yeah. As it, it's, be spread. it's because no they want you to read it this way. Okay, good night. All right, man. Peace out. Have a good night. It was great having you this weekend. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Nino. Check out our song. <laughs> Subscribe to Nino. <laughs> if you're Weed watching track. this video but you didn't watch Weed 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 Weed, 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 weed Rhythm, <laughs> go watch that. Go watch that go, too. Go watch that as well. Nino on SoundCloud and YouTube. You already know who I am. What's up? How is it? Thank you, Digi. How is it? Okay. But yeah, like you, I think they printed this book intentionally small so that it'd be easier to read, you know, horizontally, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll force you to read that way. Oh God, so good! Ah, I love this book. Okay. Um. Oh, another volume of Wreck. Okay, I don't recognize this at all. What's it called? It, it was part of the collection that was handed down to me. Wait a minute. This art style looks familiar, though. Wait, a, it looks like Sora Demo Machi, but it's not, I guess. I don't know. It might be from the same guy, because I'm reading a manga from that author <coughs> right now that also kind of looks like this. Uh, can you tell what his name is? Can you read his name? Uh, it's all kanji. Ishiguro something something. I don't know. Well, I don't remember the name that was on the book that I have because it's in the bathroom. So all right. I have no help to you. These are two... Jojo. Yeah, two volumes of Jojo I mostly just bought for the covers because like those are like two of the most iconic covers of all time. Come on. That's pretty fucking yeah, sick. Yeah, right? What you got next? Um, Boku Rano. I love fucking Boku Rano. This is one of my favorite manga. Why? Because it's... It looks like this. And it's got... Um, illicit sex. <coughs> and uh, bleak, nihilistic yeah. storytelling. This is another Asano Inio book. Um, it's a collection of some of his short stories. And just like some random, random sketches and such. I'm not really Whoa. sure what it was published Whoa. for. Whoa! This is what I opened up to. What a fucking page. What a spread. This is the most instantly excited I've ever been about a two-page spread of Inio Asano oh, yeah, right. artwork. Of any book of his that I've seen, this is probably my favorite thing I've ever opened up to. What in the fuck is going on? <coughs> this is... I'm not sure. I never read that very. Uh, what's I mean, it there's the, that looks like Poon Poon. Yeah, right? that looks like Poon Poon. Is this like more of a general art book or? Yeah, sort of. But like th that's what I bought. Oh, that's what I got it thinking it was. But it also has like an anthology of short stories. So I'm not sure. Okay. Either way, it's a good book. Wow. Yeah. This is rad. It's got all kinds of stuff in it. <coughs> this is um, three volumes of MPD Psycho. Um. What was his name again? The author of MPD Psycho? It's like A.G. Otsuka or something? I mean, that's definitely a name, but I don't know if it's that guy. Yeah, A.G. Otsuka. It's A.G. Otsuka. Um, what's it called? Yeah, it's right here. Uh, what's it called? He also did Kurosaki Corpse Delivery Service and some other stuff. He's like a professor nowadays. Um, but he wrote this manga, which was like a detective story about some crazy dude. I don't know. I never re actually read this. This was like one of the earlier, uh, ooh, titties. Can't show that to the camera. Can't show, well, actually, there's titties on one of the covers, too, so. 
Let's just move on. <laughs> you haven't even read the motherfucker. Yeah, I have not. This so, I didn't have read. This though. is a Kagi. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Bakuman, my favorite manga. Uh, we've got fucking A.G. Nizuma on the cover here. I think this is one, two, and three. I have. Uh, I have some random. I have now. I have now <coughs> Bakuman in two languages other than English. Really? So no way to read it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this is uh, Amaresu Kensha. Um, it's from the same author as um, Detroit Metal City. Oh. Yeah, which you can tell. Immediately. Immediate. Yeah, it, it's about a Russian wrestling coach who comes to, like, a Japanese school and, like, ropes this kid into wrestling and, you know. That's right, it's not translated, see. but it's only one volume. Um, here's more Bakuman. Bakuman. Uh, here is... This looks like some Moe trash. What is this about? Huh? This looks like some very mid-2000s Moe. Frankly, I have no idea either. This is part Akihabara of that... Akihabara Ichiman channel. Yeah. It's Akihabara pandering. Yeah, that, that, that was some of the stuff that was left to me, and I don't know much about it. This is definitely some very mid-2000s otaku trash. I mean, maybe it could be good. I can't <coughs> read it. But. Oh, this is this is a um, what's it called? Pretty iconic one. This is the film lives on by Tezuka. Just right. go in. Just go. Just why do you have to go under the mic? You can just uh, go I can just go in front of, front of it. Of it? Okay. Yeah, right, right here. What's it called? It was his um, semi-fictionalized account of getting into the early manga business and early anime. So it's about the life of like an animator and a comic artist and whatever. Uh, this is Biomega Volume 1. I have this in English, and I did a Manga Monday about it, so you can watch that if you want to know more. It's by Tsutomu Nihei. <coughs> He's good. Yeah, I don't know shit about this. Um, this, I know this This was made into an anime. This is out in America. Really? No, wait, maybe this wasn't an anime, but it is out in America. Oh. I've seen this cover before, but with a translated title on it. Seems like kind of a Jose manga or something. Something like that. That's just what, it, what it's looking like. I'm not sure. Just um, going by this uh, this art style gives me very Jose vibes. This is Koei de Oshigoto, if you remember that manga. I I remember the OVA, yeah, the OVA. that's for sure. Uh, yeah, with the with the Eroge voicing and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Uh, how <coughs> pornographic is this manga? Not all that much, actually, because because like even the OVA was mostly about the the voices and stuff. The OVA was fairly pornographic though like it had censored scenes but the characters were straight getting fucked like on screen so were they not the voice actresses but like the characters oh they yeah were the characters were, they were voicing they yeah shown getting okay fucked. well th this these are the t first detroit two volumes metal of city. detroit metal city this In is japanese so this is mad bull 2000 not just mad bull a vast mad i didn't even know there was like a mad bull sequel oh and oh, look at this fucking look at the glorious <laughs> here's more koi day the glorious through. twin towers beautifully standing at the start of Mad Bull 2000, just a year before 2001. There's tits right away. Oh, Mad Bull is fucking a godsend. This is another Koei day. The back cover, see this? This is indicative of the true nature of what lies inside. Let's <laughs> go. Two volumes of Princess Resurrection? Is Princess Resurrection good? No, I have not read this. You have not read it? This yeah. is bequeathed to you? Bequeathed to me, and, but I also know it's not good. Or Why is so much good. of it, the stuff that you had, like he had in Japanese? Like, was he just, he, he was, read it's like Japanese. Japanese. Okay. Yeah, what, you Honey know this, Clover. right? Honey and Clover. Yeah, I'm a fan. <coughs> I mean, obviously, Sun Gods and the Lions, like my favorite anime, and Honey and Clover is also very fucking good. Do you recognize this? I... Yes, this is Shigurui, Death Frenzy. It's easy to recognize because it says it in English on the cover. Uh, which had an anime adaptation directed by Hiroshi Hamasaki, currently directing Blade of the Immortal. It's very similar. If you like the new Blade of the Immortal, which doesn't seem like a lot of people are watching because mm -hmm. it's on Amazon Prime. Um, this is Blackjack or Yoroshiku. I have not read this. Say hello but, to Blackjack. Yeah. Is this like young Blackjack? Not sure. I, I've not read this yet. But this was also a bequeathed to This me. does not seem to be young Blackjack, but it does seem to be the same thing as Blackjack. 
Yeah, but he doesn't have the face scar, so it's hard for me to tell, right? Well, yeah, I, I can't really get a read on what it is without being able to read the text. Oh, but this this was left to me, but this is something I've come to enjoy a lot. This is a Nani, Nani wo, um, King, what was it? King, Hold it up. King Yodo, King Yodo. Um, this is about a, um, a guy who moves to Osaka to become like a loan shark. But, you know, like he finds that the line of work is actually pretty tough. So it's about him like dealing with this kind of like, you know, um, stress and managing finances and stuff like that. It's actually really interesting. Um, it's not translated at all, I think. Uh, this appears to be about a, uh, a, coup, a coup de de and her squad. Uh, no, this is, um, this is Nezumi, um, what was it? It was, it was Hashika Nezumi no Jikan. Um, it's about like a bunch of kids who, um, who are like guinea pigs or lab rats, which, which, which is, um, uh, which is what the title means. It means the time of the house mice. Um. Like during the school or whatever, but it turns out they're actually being used for like research with like superpowers or some shit. Um, I don't know what's it called. I was pretty pissed that um, my fr my um, upper class my upperclassman um, yeah my upperclassman left this one to me because the author did another manga uh, more famous uh, yesterday to something like that, um, which was like a slow paced romantic um, comedy thing about a guy and this girl. And she really likes birds. And basically, the entire manga is about this guy getting over his one-itis with <laughs> his ex-girlfriend. But it's actually pretty neat. It's getting an anime adaptation next season by Doga Kobo. So uh, I, I was pretty annoyed that he left me this manga, which nobody knows shit about, rather than the famous one. But I guess... Well, you've got Monster, Volume 3. Uh, <coughs> Monster's pretty popular. So yeah, I don't think it needs any really There's also this, which I have no idea at all. This, like, it appears to be, like, a traffic guard or something standing on a cliff. Is this about a tra- It seems to be about, like, a very passionate traffic guard, so... Probably, you know, like a heartfelt comedy about a working man. Well, that's the end of that box, yeah. so let's move on to the next, next one. Next one. Box number four. Okay, first... Um, this is the box where I, I kept some of my English manga. So you had, like, the, uh... Raman. This is the original Ranma release. Yeah. Uh, volume 9. Yeah. My Son Ikoku. Oh. Wait. It's called... <coughs> Dom I've never seen <laughs> it referred to as Domestic Dispute before. Yeah, this is a pretty early printing. Wow. Yeah, it's flipped just like all the others. Yeah. This is oh, Blackjack. Blackjack. Excellent. What what volume is this? Huh? Um, 19? 17. 17. 17. Why? Okay. Like... This release of Blackjack... It's beautiful. Uh, by Vertical. This, you can never find early volumes of it. You yeah. only find old, like, fucking late-ass volumes. I've never seen volume one in my life. These are a couple of just random English manga I have had since forever. I happen to have volume one of Hidamari Sketch. You have volume five. Actually, Why I have... do you have such random ass volumes of some of this shit? Well, do you because, just because... see it and compulsively buy it? Like uh, sometimes, sometimes I collect all the volumes and then lose them gradually over time. I was among a I actually have uh, the omnibus of this. Yeah, me too. Which is why I don't need that anymore. And we got Pluto. I have not read any of Pluto. Uh, this is volume two. Do you uh, have volume one? Huh? Yes, I do. It should be somewhere in there. Okay. Oh, Sunny by Tayo. You got all the Tayo Matsumoto. I can uh, the, yeah, this is this is the English it. release. I bought it and then I immediately regretted this, buying it. Why? Huh? Because I flipped open to a page in volume one mm. where they translated the word sensei as professor, keeping oh. in mind these. This is regarding like eight-year-old kids. So I was like. Who the hell translated this? And it actually was Michael Arias, the director of um, the black and white movie. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you remember that movie? That. Yeah. So it's like, that's kind of weird. What's it called? The, I mean... A movie director who translated this? I've like, seen that translation <coughs> used in other places before. But uh, this is one of those books that I would not buy because it's way too fucking expensive. So I'm glad to have it on hand. Um, Vagabond? I'm a vagabond. I fucking love Vagabond. I read the first, like, probably, like, six volumes when that was all that was out, I think. Yeah, this is more Keiko Takemiya, Terra-e. 
Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. All of it. All of it. All of it. I'm going to have to read that for sure. Um, oh, this is this is probably my favorite manga of all time. If you don't know Terra A, it's like yeah. a 70s sci-fi uh, manga. This is probably my favorite manga of all time. Oh, you've got Phoenix. How much of, are you just just volume four? Or do you have any more of it? Uh, I do, but what's it called? I would this love this to is read all this is. Phoenix. You don't have to because most of the stories are disconnected and they're also really fucking long. Um, volume four is one of the more famous parts. Um, this is Karma. It takes place. Um, during like you know medieval Japan. Yeah, I've seen the OVA yeah. that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, it's about two that, sculptors uh, who fight over the right to carve like the Buddha, um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful manga about mortality, about death, and about passion, and like. God, what's like, I can't say. First of all, this printing is very hard to find nowadays. I got this at a library sale, um, but it's just one of the most like, well-made manga of all time. You know. What's it called? The, the OVA every sing, every really single good. time I read it, it brings me to tears. Like, the OVA can't compare. The manga's just so good. All right. It's um, still worth watching. It's still OVA. worth watching, yeah. But, but you read the manga if you can. You know? So that's so much better. Okay, this is another one of my favorite books. This is Fred Patton's Watching Anime, Reading Manga, 25 Years of Essays. Fred Patton, you know, rip in peace. He died recently. Um, but I've had this book for years, you know. Um, it might not be super relevant to anime today, but it's basically his musings on classic anime. You've got the publication and popular influence of Jungle Emperor in Japan, followed by analysis of the plot and theme of Jungle Emperor, the animated version of Jungle Emperor. This is this is about Simba the White Lion compared with... Um, what might Disney have known? What should Disney have known? Yeah, this is about, um, what's it called, that compared with, uh, what's his face, uh, Lion King. There's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, it's wonderful. Seriously, if you're into anime analysis, this is like the perfect book. Well, you know what I'm into. Yeah, but so. I also know you don't like to read. I like to read anime analysis. Huh? I read tons of anime analysis. Yeah, Battle I Angel Alita. So. I hope you this enjoy the This is perfect book. because I have volume one. And you <laughs> have volumes two, three, and four. Uh, do you have volume five? Because that would so. be the whole original series. I don't think so. And then I uh, may have read this after... Like I said, my, my collection out. of English manga is very spotty. I don't actually have that much. Um, if you just had volume five, it would This be is perfect. Love Roma. Love it, Roma. It's another very famous romantic comedy. It looks um, adorable. Won a bunch of awards. It I've ha- never seen this in stores before. Yeah, it was, it was very critically well-received, and it's that's why it got Ray. published in the West, but... Like it's very niche. The art is kind of blocky and weird looking, but it's a it's a really charming story about young love, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, like it's just very wholesome, you know. There's not a whole lot of drama. There's not a whole lot of whatever. Delray. This is like early yeah. Delray. Yeah, early Delray, yeah. <coughs> Never saw that in a store. You should. It's a very good. Well, read. I'll read it. I have it now. Uh, this is a copy of the Kimi no Nawa oh, novel. Your name, in English. Yeah, in English. Is it any good? It's all right. I mostly bought it because I wanted to. What's it called? Um, what's it called? See where the novel and the movie well, differed in, in plot. First person. That's weird. It's written in two. It, both both characters. First person perspectives. I run. I'm sprinting down a dark deer track, repeating his name again and again. Taki. 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 Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. It's kind of. It's cheesy. all right. I remember. I'll never forget. At last, through the gaps in the trees, I begin catching glimpses of the lights of Itamori. Yeah, it seems pretty. Uh, it seems like yeah, I would this rather is a watch copy the movie. <laughs> Yozakor Quartet. Interesting. I um, I had always wanted to read Yozakor Quartet because I thought it looked cool. The art is but, actually very underwhelming. But then I would flip. Yeah, that's. I would flip through it and I'd be like, mm. but the the and then the anime looks amazing, but it's incomprehensible. Exactly. So, right. uh, Doctor Slump. Oh fuck yeah! I'm definitely excited to read Doctor Slump. For some reason, I have volume two of Yotsuba, but no other volumes. I have read most of Yotsuba back when it was like peak hype. Um, this is a couple copies of Genshin. I, I, I do got have it. all of Genshin yeah, in yeah. English, so. So it's, what's it called? You can, you can give that away. If I you have want. it in the omnibus form. Oh okay. This no, is the. I'm not gonna give it away. You gotta take this. Oh shit. The drops of I, God. I have volume one of this, and I did a uh, I did a manga Monday. Oh really? I have not seen volume two before, because volume one was already like a weird find. Like I'd never seen it. Mm-hmm. It was at some. Uh, it was at this store called uh, Hammer Girl in Rochester that uh-huh. has like a really amazing manga selection. 
but uh, they only had volume one, so yeah, well, you now just, I get to continue. You got, the you gotta get, you gotta get that pearl book. decanting they shit, man. They take forever to read. <laughs> uh, here's speaking oh, of huge books, yeah. so Lone Wolf oh, and Cub, nine, eleven, and thirteen. Best volumes, man. Excellent. Actually, no. I, mean, I also could have I read these? I also have eighteen. Could I actually read these without having read anything pre- prior? Yeah, it, it, the stories are, isn't that interconnected. You'll be able to pick it up. If you say so. Here's Dungeon Meshi. I do have volume one of this as well. Um, Pat Labor. Oh, sick! Yeah, Pat Labor. Two copies of. I'm gonna be just getting my Pat Labor on with yeah, all right. the Pat Labor shit you left me. I know, I right? Just in- incidentally happened to be <laughs> planning to cover it. Uh, cool. I have volume one of this, but I have not read volume two of Girls. Yeah, this is Voynich Hotel, which is Doman Seimov. I I have volume volume one of Voynich Hotel. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do not have two or three yet. I don't think two or three is published. They are. They really? Are. Yeah. I mean, I, I finished reading it in Japanese. So I wasn't very concerned. Let's see. What else do I have in English? I think this is all about it for English. I think I have like a handful of books left. Um, the Astro Boy Omnibus Collection. I do have. Um, actually, this is different. The one I have is the newer release where they just bunch together stories <coughs> by like relevance, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, this this seems to just be actually volumes one and two. Yeah. So I'd be curious to read this to see how how different it is from what they chose to put in that other book. Here's the first volume of the English release of Nichijo. Excellent. I read Nichijo when it was being a uh, fan translated. Yeah. Well, I mean, was, we we all were. It's excellent. Uh, this is Kazuo Koike's Wounded Man. Oh fuck! No. Funnily enough, this book, uh, they had. They had this as a set at this uh, local comic book uh-huh. store called Trilogy, and he would not let me buy just volume one. He was like, you have to buy all of it, and it's like $100. And I was like, but it looks so cool. Um, it's like, it's really intense fucking uh, noir, like, violent, pulp, mm-hmm. crazy shit. I mean, it's Kazuo Koike. Yeah, I guess right. all that stuff is like Here's that. another volume of Yuri Camp. Yuru Kampu. I'm sure May will read these. She likes Yuru Kampu. Uh, she, I think she'll like this better. It's Twin Speaker. It's about a girl oh, who wants... Oh, shit. I've gr- been meaning to read this yeah, it's forever. About, it's about a girl who wants to be an astronaut and all that stuff. This had an anime as well that was also... It was like one of those... Like, it was kind of a cult light, light show. Like, people liked the yeah, show, right? but it just didn't have that, like, spark that would make something stick around, like Haibane or Lane, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, nobody remembers Twin Speaker. About as many people might remember this as, like, figure 17, you know? Mm-hmm. But uh, I would love to read this. Um, what else you got? I, now back to the Japanese stuff. This is... Oh, Pony Pony Dash! No, Pony Pony. Well, Pony Pony? <laughs> oh, God, this is collapsing on me. We got to start here. Just fill out the other oh. row with the one that you've already done. Okay. So talk about Pony Pony. Well, I don't know much about the manga. I assume it's a four coma because the you can open it up and check for yourself. Oh, it's actually not even it's a four not. coma. It's not. Wow. Okay. But yeah, I mean, Pony Pony Dash was. It, it was a very surreal gag manga this that was is most very different looking from the anime. Yeah, like, but it, but it was still a very surreal gag surreal. manga that was mostly known for making referential humors, right. humor. And um, when the authors couldn't come up with any more, they asked fans to send in their favorite like references, so they put them in. So that's why the show is just like a non-stop avalanche of fucking references. Yeah. It's very much keeping in the spirit of the manga. Excellent. <coughs> okay, what's next? Um, then I got this anthology of manga called Ox, which I actually got from a friend. Um, I don't I know much about it, though. For more of these here. I'll hang, I'll... This girl's face, though. This looks... This looks weird. Oh, this is uh, Midnight Cafeteria. Another big comics, um, what's it called, manga. What's it called, right here. This looks here. extremely weird. This is Midnight Cafeteria. It's a it's a food manga about a bunch of guys who meet at, um, at like, places to get late night food. And they talk about their lives and stuff like that. Their marriages, their, you know, um, work and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's like a very calm and somber slice of life thing, you know. Because that's the kind of things you get up to in bars. Oh, this is this is this yeah, is this is okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is um, what I was talking about earlier. Uh, Taiyo Matsumoto's Takemitsu Samurai in manga form. Oh my god, it is so fucking gorgeous. You have no idea. I mean, they're about to have some idea when I show them. 
what do you recommend I show? The final fight, I think it's in here. Do you want to spoil the final fight? Here's some cool looking shit. Is it in here? I can't remember which volumes I had. <coughs> well, in any case, let me, let me see. you can go read all Tayo Matsumoto stuff because obviously you're a big fan of all of it. Uh, what's it? No, no. I need to completely complete my collection of Tayo Matsumoto. I'm keeping this. I'm not giving this to you. I need to. I need to fill this out and get the other copies too because I only have two and four right now. So you can t- t- take that with you to uh, wherever you're going. Yeah, fuck. Uh, if I'm going to Japan. I might as well go and finish out my Tayo Matsumoto collection, man. Um, all right. Now here's for the complete stuff. Uh, this is volumes one through. Oh, you've got all of Oto one Yome through Gatari. six. Well, not all of it, but all of the first part of Oto Yome Gatari. That's it. Yes. That this, this was a uh... sadly not in English. So what do you mean sadly not in English? You want it, you want it in Japanese. If you have not seen Oto Yome Gatari, this is one where you can just open to any random. Yeah, page right. And it just is... be like, look at that shit. What it's the amazing. Fuck is that? It's nonstop, <coughs> just the most detailed fucking artwork of. Uh, yeah, Kaoru Mori is amazing at this. Emma was also quite good, but you know, Ultimate Mega Gatari just has a much better story, I think. Look at that. It's about a bunch of Turkish women. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I read some of it when I first started getting shy. Right, the last thing is my. Complaint. Oh, if only this was in English too, I could finally read the rest of it. I have had Volume One. This was the complete forever. collection of Sundome, um, which is a. Erotic romantic comedy manga, um, about and just look at the yeah. girl. It's, she is all of his fetishes. Is uh, yeah, what's it called? Um, and it's about this guy in a club, and you know they have a pact. What's it called to not date any girl? So this girl comes in and she constantly teases him, and they start like a weirdly sexual sadomasochistic relationship of, of like dom and sub and whatever. And you know it sounds like really weird and gross and fetishistic at first but it actually develops into like a really strong emotional bond the manga actually ends up like being surprisingly wholesome although the ending is just like heartbreaking and i i, I bought all of it in ja- i imported all the volumes in japanese because i was reading the official release of which i actually do have one volume i, I have the final volume what's it called um and anyways i was reading the ending which is like you know just n- notoriously sad and i was like my god this translation is awful Let's go. So I'm like, screw it. This is a great manga. It deserves a better translation and the better scans. So I'm just going to import all of the um, original manga and get my team to do it ourselves. And I never could find the time to do that. So now I just have a bunch of this. Uh, you're just spoiling yourself on the end. I mean, I couldn't tell what the fuck was going on. Oh, okay. So it's all good. So it's only eight volumes? Yeah, it's only eight volumes. Okay. Right. So that's it for this box. All right, next box. <sighs> heavy, heavy, heavy. All right, it's time for the realist <laughs> box of them all. All right. So this is a box that's mostly comprised of, like, storyboards, key animation, Ginga shoe, you know, production materials and stuff like that. Let's start left from r- left to right. This is... I, 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 crack it open. I think you can guess it, figure out what this is. I mean... It's production notes from Ping Pong. What's it called? Has, what's it called? Lots of background art, scene, set, scene settings, key animation frames, character design sheets, stuff like that. Excellent. Pretty cool. Read through that. Give it a look through. <coughs> what is this? The art of, of Brass Hopper Manufacturer. Oh, sick. Oh, it's, a, it's a signed copy I got from Suda51. Wow, where is it signed at? Uh, inside cover. Oh, fuck yeah. Suda 5-1. 5-1, not 51. Isn't that 51? Goichi Suda. Go- oh, five Goichi, one. yeah, 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 whatever. Oh, look at this shit. I mean, if you don't know Grasshopper Manufacturer, it's, uh... You know, they did No More Heroes, Killer 7. Yeah, this was back when me and Jimmy went to interview him at um, MomoCon a couple years back. You interviewed him? What yeah. did uh, what'd you talk about? I don't remember. I what was, was it like? Where was it published? I don't remember. Well? We were pretty drunk. Incredible. I mean, what better way is there to interview Suda51 than to be drunk off your ass? 
This book is fucking sick. It's yeah, it got is. all kinds of good stuff in it. And don't lose it. It's fucking signed. Okay. I think, is this the same one that I have? Or Maybe. is this a different Precure and Dore Me? This is, this is just a um, Umakoshi Yoshihiko at Toei animation book. So it's not even just Dore Me and uh, Yeah, it's got, I think Precure. this is the same one I have because it's got Mary and Galley as well. Although mine has a different cover. Maybe. But it's... It's all the same on the inside? No, I think it might actually just be a different book with all the same shows, honestly. Wow, that's weird. Uh, speaking uh, of which... Yeah, this guy, I mean, Umakoshi is one of the yeah. all-time greats. For oh, me. then you'll be very happy at what I have coming up next. Speaking of which... What's I got? This is a special 10-year anniversary Precure book. I oh, got fuck. filled with interviews and stuff like that. This stuff's going right into our Precure shrine. <laughs> right here. And there, I believe there's actually a written message in there from every single actress on Precure. Oh my god. Yeah. Is any, it's all in Japanese though, right? It's all in Japanese. Yeah, yeah, those are just some character settings and introductions. I think there's one for every Precure in there. Amazing. They're sorted by color, surprisingly. Um... This is when, what, Happiness Charge was coming out, I think? Yeah, because it was the 10th anniversary, so. Um, no, before this. What is before this whole, the... uh, hold up. Here, you take this. Yeah, sure. There's, um, like, postcards of all the characters. <coughs> like, literally, they are functional postcards. I don't know who will actually mail these and not just keep them. But... <laughs> um, yeah, these are all the staff comments from people who worked on the show. There's like 20 pages of this stuff. Actually, more like 40 pages of this stuff. Look at, look, like half the book is this stuff. Yeah, just, just a bunch of staff comments about the show. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the rest of the girls. These are folded in a very weird way. Yeah. Careful. Okay, right, what's next? Next is a Nanoha, what's it called, guidebook. Oh, I've got enough Nanoha shit in my life, but okay. I am a, I am definitely I'm about as much of an expert as one could be on Nanoha without being able to understand Japanese. <laughs> uh, here's a guidebook for Which Kimi. Which is to say that I do not know what happens in the uh, the audio dramas. Oh. <laughs> What's it called? Here is a guidebook for Kimi no Nawa, which I mostly got because the cover was very pretty. One more time. One more. Wait, wrong show. Wrong, wrong movie. <laughs> I can't remember any of how any of the songs in your name go, so I just went to five centimeters for a second. This is Genga, a Genga Shu from the Kea movie, filled with storyboards Genga. and key animation. Ah! Genga Benga! It's got the keys. Fuck. This has got the whole movie. It's got the whole movie. Whole damn movie. Whole fucking movie. Well, maybe not the whole damn movie. It's not like uh, the Monogatari books. It's a lot of drawings, I mean. It's definitely not the whole movie. Yeah, but, right. uh, It's a lot of it. Just the good parts. <coughs> this is a art book of Itaru Hinoe, um, who is the main artist on all the key shit. Yeah, she was also responsible for making all the characters look like fetal alcohol syndrome, you know, Jenny Nicholson, you know, goddamn, you know, mongoloid. Jenny Nicholson? What? <laughs> Nothing. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Did you mean, uh, did you mean, um, Greta Thunberg? What? No. Are we talking about fetal alcohol syndrome? Who the fuck is Greta Thunberg? Never mind. <coughs> yeah. This, these are, oh my god, no! Oh no, it's just something stuck. I thought the paper was pierced. Oh, 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 scare me for a second. Okay. Uh, this, these are the Nisei Monogatari production notes. Amazing. Yeah. They never released a um, set of like oh, keyframes for Nisei like they did for Bake, so this is this is about we, as good as we can get. Remember when you were like, Ugh, <coughs> I don't, I don't have the production notes for the other shows. I only like Bake Monogatari. I said I didn't have the key animation notes for the other shows. You would though. Huh? You would. You just admitted you would, if not for the fact that this is all that exists. Huh? I, I probably wouldn't. Those are super expensive. Sure, sure. That stopped you before. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did spend a lot of money on this shit. How much was this book? This had to be sixty bucks, right? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, here is a Utena guidebook, which honestly is not all that interesting, except for the fact that it has some 
key storyboards and keyframes in there, which is most of the yeah. reason I bought it. And it's really hard to find. Like a lot of it is just the illustrations that come up when yeah. you search for Utada on Google. But but a lot of it is like incredibly Wait, hard to find stuff. Do not show me. That's beautiful. Yeah. Some some of these can be incredibly hard to find. I don't think they're published anywhere else. And it's Utana, so you know. Yeah. I have a duty to the world. Be papas. Be papas es su papas. <coughs> Wait, what is it? Is this meant to be? This is like a roped off section that looks like it is meant to be taken out. Is it? Let me see. Yeah, look, it's like a, it's an inner book. Like there, there's a whole other smaller book inside here that you're meant. Oh to, yeah, that's like, right. Tear out I think I just never had the balls to tear it out. I mean, it, it seems to be like an interview with Ikuhara or yeah. something. Yeah. It's kind of long and dense. But uh, I'm not gonna bother tearing it out because I can't read it. Oh, it's my, <laughs> it's my favorite. It's Akio Watanabe. Akio Watanabe. Yeah. And Character designer not, for Baki Monogatari. And it's of not Kajitsu. Monogatari. You have to understand. I mean, look around at my walls, anybody, and you will know there's Monogatari shit everywhere. I have tons of Monogatari art. Why? Because I love the character designs so goddamn much. But, like, Akio Watanabe did not only do... He also did Popotown. He was partially responsible for Caramel Dancing. He's, uh, he's good. He's good. He did lots of stuff. And a lot of these character designs you'll see later recycled into other series he's worked on in this book. Because this is from some of his early work. Yeah. I can tell. That's why I'm <coughs> excited about it. It's like, this is pre monogatari Okay, well, if you're getting excited, this is just the peak. Because... There's also this. What is that? Yes. What does it look like? What sketch. does it look like? What does it look like? It does look like he did. He the mari, he the mari desu. The X's. Oh my God! When you see the other side. Oh. You know is one of my top tier cutest girls of all time. I think. They're explaining how to wide. No small wide, only big wide. It's uh, it's all the production notes and character designs from the original like series. It's the character sheets that they base the things on. This is a book I will spend some time yeah. looking at for sure. Oh my god, it's even got the like. Yeah, it's got the rooms. <laughs> all right, what what's the next thing you have? I fucking love him. Sketch. The next thing I have is four books in a collection. What is that? This is my collection of Yoshihiku uh, Umakoshi Gengashu oh. that he produced and sold only at Kamaket. It cost me an arm and a leg to get all four books. Yeah. But look, look at how pretty they are. They're like fucking embossed with silver letters. Oh, that's not even the meat of it. That's just some shit he put in at the beginning. Yeah, there we go. It's his stuff for Kasham, Baki, Precure, Doremi, stuff Finally, like that. Finally, one with fucking Kasherm in it. Yes. Yes, give me some Kasherm punches. Give me some of that good good. What do you mean Kasham? It's Kasham. 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 Well, they always write a Kasherm, so I choose to call him Kasherm. Yeah, that is kind of weird. He also, he also worked He also worked on like Saint Seiya, which I never actually yeah, watched. It was so. Saint Seiya Omega and it's not good because not the good. directing is very bad. Here. Let's go. I figured you would be big fans of these considering how much you like Umokoshi. I do. Oh, but I also am a big fan of the Oh, you didn't go for the one I was looking at. Okay. Well, we'll, well get there eventually. Collection. This is just the Pix of Art collection. Nothing um, crazy about it. I mean, Pix of is it's where everybody comes from. So, yeah. Here's some more doujin books. Um, this is White Detura's, what's it called, book mostly of like somewhat sexual lowly art. What? You'll see. It, it, it's this like, looks almost like this one Toho book I have. Well, he does do like Toho art. I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, but this isn't, this isn't Toho art. I don't art. see any sexual lolly art in here. Really? You're saying when you see you see Lolis wearing frilly dresses and you don't think it's sexual? Come on. Not really. And also not that lolly. 
Here's a Monster Hunter art book. Mohan. I like this cover design. It's neat. Okay, now this, this, this is the sexual loli stuff. Um, <coughs> this is Oyari Ashito's art book, if you know who he is. Um, this looks like Little Witch Romanesque. Yes, yes, he worked on that. So I would say, yeah, I do know who that is, and I'm a big fan. I'm, in fact, I'm a He worked on a lot of visual fan. novels, like A.U. Senki, Quartet, etc. In fact, you might never see this book again, because this might not leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Here's this. Show up and you. I will just conveniently let you forget that you. Well, now that now that now that this is on camera, of course <laughs> I'm not gonna forget, right? What the hell? Yeah, you left video evidence. Case closed. But I can edit that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a Saki fan book I never actually opened because I was, I'm not a big fan of Saki, so I was gonna give this as a fr oh. present to a friend who uh, like does Saki. like Saki, but. I am a friend who likes Saki. This is not even opened. Yeah, no, it's mint condition. Well, fuck. It's got all of them. I want to see this in the back. Do you care if I open it? Uh, uh, yeah, why not? You know what? Just keep it. Consider this a present. I was going to give it to someone originally. Whoever I was going to give it to, I already forgot him by now, so. I like Saki. Okay. This, this is... This is, this is the Ginga shoe, so all the storyboards oh, and key... Um, key animation for Patty and Stocky. Like yeah. So when you look at, over these Genga Shu books, like, do you literally just sit there and like read through <coughs> it page by page, like you're watching the show? Do you try to like have sound effects in your head? Like, well, what's some, your approach to reading through? Well, a lot of times I actually like to read these while I'm watching the show in question. Oh, okay. Yeah, because then I could like kind of compare it, contrast it. Sometimes I just spend a couple, like, 30 minutes or so just pulling it out and reading it by itself. I think this is the kind of thing where it really, like, the more you look at it, the more you get to appreciate it. But it's mm -hmm. nice to have the final product on the side when you're doing it, right? Because then you get, because part of the intrigue is seeing how all the pieces come together. Right. And nowhere is that more true, maybe, than, like, panty and stocking, because the style is just so neatly defined, you know? In all these, like, Genga shoots. It's so clean. Look at Monkey Lupin! Look at fucking Monkey Lupin! You gotta, you gotta really shove it in the camera if you want them to see that. Here, there you go, Monkey Lupin. Actually, it's not Monkey Lupin. Was it? I can't remember that show. What was it supposed to be? The Monkey Lawyer guy? Huh? It was kind of like Golgo. No, it was, it was the monkey thing that got hit by something or other and became like Super Monkey. I can't remember what that reference was. Neither do I. Um. Then here's a Makoto Shinkai backgrounds book because oh, everybody I mean, knows that's the that's this, the main appeal now of this. this movie. Now this is the absolute <laughs> epitome of a coffee table book. Right yeah. Here. Now that is the epitome. This of coffee table is book. the most coffee table ass book I have ever seen in my life. It's literally nothing but his wallpapers. One more time, Fuzakata uh, Jikanyo. Hold on. Let me just. Let me just entreat you all to the experience, all right? <laughs> there you go. That actually, was literally I, the same experience <laughs> as watching the end of five centimeters per second. I actually got this book mostly because there's this section. In, <laughs> because there's section in this. Um, where it details how like Shinka actually in makes these backgrounds, and uh, it's like a process with like After Effects and Photoshop, and he gets his camera out and goes and takes pictures on location and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. All right, this is a collection of Madoka production oh, material yeah. I got from Maguka. Become Maguka. Uh, hand me one of them. Okay. Oh, is that like a? What is this, that? This is just a print that came with the oh, collection. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. You, while, while you look over this stuff, you can it's wax nice. nostalgic about how great Madoka was before they ruined it with fucking Magia Record. Magia Record's good. Yeah, it There's nothing the, wrong with it. What's I got? Fucking... There's nothing wrong with the anime of Magia Record. Yeah. Like... 
like a rape baby can turn out to be successful. That doesn't mean the rape was a good thing. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So that's the. That's the. This feels like I, design I feel materials. Like I have to be, this doesn't feel like it's designed to be opened up more than like a small amount. Yeah, well, you just have to mess with the spine a little bit, really ease it open. What I like to do to preserve my books is I like to lay them flat and then pull them the pages toward the center a bit at a time. Okay. That way it really stretches the pages out and stretches the spine out so you don't like crack the spine or rip the pages. Also, this is really interesting. This is a collection of explicitly of um, Inu Curry. Oh, just him. Okay, well, this is the guy making the new show, so let's show it off. Dude, sh show show the camera these pictures. These absolute fucking beautiful. Grab one side. It's a big book. Yeah, these are fucking ill. Okay, slip back like a couple. Of... Yeah, show hey, What's this? It's like a, like a fucking piece in there. This one I will definitely go through as well. It's like a it's like a little postcard <coughs> with a recipe on it. Oh, it's a recipe for Inu curry. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I got to make it. <laughs> it's probably full of dog though. No, it just calls for generic meat. Oh, this is awesome. This is very like It's a recipe for Inu curry. <laughs> this is this is the epitome of my aesthetic right here. This is cluster punk. This is absolutely cluster punk. Um, and it's very Hajime Ueda esque as well. Yeah. It oh, also sick. came with this little bookmark. I love it. Alright, well, is that's, that all? Yeah, that's everything for this box. There's only one left. Alright, last box. Uh, Weaves are gonna check out at this point, so you might as well fucking plug your shit before you get into actual books. Yeah, th this is the real book stuff. Although there are some Japan-related things in here too. Okay. You know, I mean, it's me after all. I wouldn't be reading real books if they didn't pertain to anime in some way. It's true. Yeah. So let's start with, um, let's start with this. The Japanese mind which is a book on Japanese culture and anthropology. And reading it has enlightened me to a lot of things about like the way anime is made. Um, or even not just anime is made, but um, <coughs> um, like undercurrents in Japanese culture to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like there's this um, concept in um, Japanese um, society called giri and ninjo. Your obligation to the society and your, you know, duty to yourself, the right. idea is. And, um, a lot of scholars have said that like the fundamental conflict throughout Japanese history um, has always been the giri and the ninjo. Do right. I the greater good of my lord and my society, or should I pursue my own interests? You know, mm -hmm. the classic kabuki example is like a samurai who runs off with an illicit it's, it's lover. It's essentially the same as the the, the communist versus well, I mean, I wouldn't I mean, I wouldn't like, project that kind of like Western lens on it, but the. The point is, like, whenever you see a bunch of anime, you know, and it's always, like, a protagonist who has to sacrifice everything or whatever, or mm. characters who are seemingly fine with, like, bittersweet endings because of that, right. it t tends to come down to Giri and then Ninjo. And um, this book is just filled with stuff like this, and it's a fantastic book. If you're looking to learn not just about anime, but about, like, understanding it on a deeper level and understanding Japanese culture, th this yeah. book is, a, I think, a must-read. Okay, I'll read it right now. <laughs> Done. I know everything about Japan. I am Japan. Okay, this is Joseph Albers' Interaction of Color. It's a textbook that's often used in like art school. Um, Very good palettes. Yeah. Um, it contains examples of palettes. It contains notes on color theory. Um, this I will definitely read immediately. Yeah, it's a very interesting book. Um, what's it called? One, I bought this book when I was like getting into like. Um, composition and um, what's it called um, cinematography for anime so I was like okay I, I like these colors I don't like these colors I kind of want to know why mm -hmm. and I kind of want to know what artists think about when they choose the palettes they choose mm -hmm. like Bakemonogatari great example you know you'll see like example palettes that are very similar to the ones in that show because that show has a very strict understanding of color palette yeah you know? I mean the Kizu film <coughs> yo oh like there's no blue in those movies it's crazy no 
old blue. Fucked blue. Fuck blue. All right, what's next? All right. We continue with this, you know, production line of things. Here is the SCAD Essentials Storyboarding Essentials. It's a textbook used by Savannah College um, of Arts and Design. School that Nino goes to. Yeah. Um, and it's basically a guidebook on how to storyboard and the principles of storyboarding. And I didn't want to storyboard anything, but I read this because I wanna, I wanted to understand the massive storyboard I collections. I storyboard uh, yeah. Thing, yeah. so I will definitely read this as well. Yeah. What to go? But I'm glad that you have this. In fact, I have a lot of stuff that's useful. This will be very useful. <coughs> All right. This is like a full blown textbook. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's literally an art school textbook. Yeah, but sometimes textbooks are the best way to learn about things, you know? Yeah. Now, speaking of which, this was um, my textbook for a class on modern Japan in college, which I just never got rid of. The big use. Yeah, big use because it. I got it from the school bookstore, right? Because I still think it's a fantastic book, right? It covers Japanese history from um, the late Tokugawa all the way up until the 1950s. Okay. It's um, a lot of history. It is a lot of history. It's very interesting, though. Um, then I have the uh, Scott McCloud collection, I or two of the books, Making Comics and Understanding Comics. You can see either. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, the, uh, my buddy Tom Oliver is a big fan of these. He just made a video about Yeah, them. great books. I think they're books. also, not just for comic book guys, but like, I think they're essential reading for manga too. You have to understand that this is a comic guidebook that is in fact a comic. Yeah. So, so you see the principles demonstrated. Like he's not like yeah. a hypocrite or anything, right? <laughs> but um, it doesn't talk about manga in too much depth, although it brings it up here and there. But the principles it discusses apply to Eastern comics as much as Western comics. And I think if you really want to understand manga, you can't, you can't avoid having to read these books, right? Yeah. Because they are still some of the best introduction to you know, things like paneling or line work or even you know, dialogue and writing that you would use in comics because those work on a much different economy of scale than like a novel or, or a film. Mm. I'll definitely read those too. Yeah. You got some good stuff. I do, I do. Um, anime that, Explosion. Anime Explosion. This is a... I've seen this one Yeah, before, fairly, somewhere. fairly famous book. Um, it's just a guide to like anime production. What's it called? It, it is a little dated by now though. I click like. <laughs> but, uh. I see Revolutionary Girl Utena. I click like. Yeah, th there's a lot of editorials in here. It looks but, interesting. Yeah, I'll probably it's pretty give interesting. That a shot. Okay, what's that? It's by Patrick Drazen. Drazen. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> oh, here's a big book. Um, what's it called? I argue with people on pi about piracy a lot, so. Uh, this, this book is like has a fucking law book. It, it, it's a law textbook. Oh my god! Copyright cases and materials. Holy fifth, fifth fucking edition. shit! If you want to, I can literally quote it. I can quote directly from the book. Uh, next time, I have to send a fucking copyright uh, <laughs> right counterclaim. <laughs> Look at this. This literally. This is a. This is massive. I mean, when is this from? Is this up to date by any? Like, god, I hope so. When? What year is it? Because I have to imagine copyright cases are happening all the time. 1999? 1999. I don't think this is going to have much to say about the internet, but... Uh, it's useful for cases like reproduction and piracy, though. Sure. Okay, what's next? Um, next is a book on critical theory. Let's go. I got this from my high school literature teacher. I've been reading it ever since. It's called Critical Theory Today. It's just a book about, like... You know, critical theory. Yeah, I've read different I've, kind, different kinds of criticism, different schools of thought, stuff like that. I've I've read a book like this. <coughs> I don't know if it was that one, but it's pretty dense. I shouldn't say I read it because Ghost Lightning read it to me <laughs> in the Philippines. Uh, okay. Um, from here on out, it's mostly a lot of books on um, Sid Field. Sid Field screenplay. This is like the definitive guide, the the Bible of screenwriters. Okay. Um, I feel go. like there's got to be more than one book that has been considered the Bible. Well, screen yeah, that, that, that's why this box is still half full. Yeah. Um, but no, this is still a very foundational text, right? A lot of modern like you know, narrative theory is just based on this book alone. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 
I feel like a lot of times people like to criticize the writing in anime or manga or anything, yeah. and they don't actually know jack shit about writing. They're like, oh, no character development, too much character development, sideways character yeah. development, 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 I mean, yada, 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 yada. Uh, a lot of people who write reviews have like no yeah. ground in any kind of background yeah, of so, understanding. So, so I, a couple critique. years ago, I started thinking, well, what makes development good? What makes this yeah. good and this bad and this enjoyable and this not? Why is Goku being a Mary Sue annoying, but Saitama being a Mary Sue kind of cool? Um, mm-hmm. So I just started reading all of these books on writing, screenwriting, fiction, etc. And that's kind of given me a fuller understanding. And it kind of makes me a little disdainful at all these like YouTubers who talk about writing without knowing anything about the subject. I know, I know things. I bet I'll read that book and I'll go, yeah, that's fucking what I th- exactly how I. Yeah, I do it all along. Uh, 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 speaking of which, this is um, William William Zinser's on writing. Well, a book I have not well. finished. Yeah, it's mostly about writing nonfiction, but this book is like haggard. This book has seen better days. It's very, very old. But um, what is the Smitten Sword Mask? Oh, that is a foil Magic the Gathering card I use as a bookmark. You use a foil as a bookmark. <coughs> yeah, it's worth like five cents. Okay. Um. So the idea of this book is it's a little less about like theory and more about practicum. It's about how to encourage yourself, motivate yourself, what are good, good practices to keep in mind when writing, etc. You know, it's very much a book for the writer rather than like critics or any anything else. Uh, this is one of my favorite. Actually, I'm not giving this to you. Uh, what's it go? This is Patrick Galbraith's Idol and Celebrity in Japanese Media Culture. And it cost me an arm and a leg to get this goddamn book because academic writing is too expensive. I do want to read this. Though. Um. I'm sure you can find an ebook or something. Actually, maybe not because I, I couldn't find one, so I had to go buy it. Um, <coughs> but it's just an incredible book on idol culture in Japan, why people like idols, what idols mean to the country. Um, it got me, it enlightened me a lot about the subject. For example, um, it talks about how there's a lot of female idol fans, um, even for female idols, because idols, like, they don't tap into it like a sexual instinct all the time. A lot of times they tap into like a protective or maternal or paternal instinct. Um, the relationship an idol has with her fans is often one of like support and encouragement. You're there to nurture your idol by giving her money. The idol isn't really expected to give anything back She's to you. She's basically a neopet. She's basically a neopet. That's a good way to put it, right? She's like a virtual pet Always that you can mind. occasionally shake hands with at a live event or something like that. Um, also draws a distinction between things like idols and K-pop stars, you know? Like, the K-pop stars are people you look up to, you go to their concerts because you just think that'd be a good time. Idols don't really have any talent, they can't sing, they can't dance, they don't wear very sexy clothing, but, you know, you're there because you want to nurture them. That's the fundamental, at least that's what Galbraith says is, like, the fundamental appeal of idols. I think that comes through in idol media, so... Oh, yeah, a lot. Let's go. Um... <coughs> Here's another book on writing. It's John Truby's *The Anatomy of Story*. Um, it's a little, it's a little bit looser and less theoretical than um, Sid Field's book, but it's still very well regarded, and it, you know, it has a lot of really useful material in there. It's got lots of lists. Yes, he really likes his lists for whatever reason. I dig it. <laughs> Here's John Gardner's book, *The Art of Fiction*. There's a lot of my like my notes in here. Um, it's another great book on writing. Um, what's it called? It, not specifically screenwriting, Joe. Just general writing. Notes on craft for young writers. Yes. What's it called? Um, you got tons of notes in this. Yeah. Was this I, a school book for you? Or? Yeah, this was a school book for me in college, but I still read it um, occasionally. Um, it's just a really interesting book. It discusses different kinds of plots. What's it called? Different kinds of characters. What you should think about when things go into yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. Whether you're trying to write a story or trying to critique a story, I think this book makes a very useful resource. Um, speaking of which, uh, the next two books are, I think, the two most useful resources when trying to critique a story. The first is Orson Scott Card, you know, Ender's Game. Yeah. He wrote this book called Characters and Viewpoint um, <coughs> about character writing, about how to pick the best characters for your story, how to transform them, what kind of stories you need, what kind of characters, and how to make character interactions interesting. And throughout that the book, actually really good. yeah, throughout the book, it's taught me a lot. Um, throughout the book, he emphasizes the importance of suffering and pain. That a character isn't allowed to win unless they have suffered great pain. Or if a character wins too much, if they're doing really well, then the only way the story should end is with great pain. Mm-hmm. Um, good example, yeah, Ender's Game. Yeah. Fucking for, for Ender has a good time. He 
you know, genocides a whole civilization. Yeah. Spoilers for Ender's Game, you know. <laughs> uh, and in the sequel, he's only allowed to win because he suffered that great pain and he's moved on from it and that's taught him something and he's able to grow from it. So, f- seriously, fantastic, fantastic book. What's it called? It's changed my... Reading that book has changed my opinion on, like, innumerable anime from, like, Ray Zero to Zero Experiments Lane. That book is amazing. And this book, called Creating Character Arcs, is the... by um, K.M. Wyland. This this is, like, the conclusive answer to that whole argument about, like, fucking character development and all that. Yeah. Because this is a book that specifically <coughs> focused on... Uh, writing character arcs, growth, etc., and the different kinds of arcs and the different kinds of characters it can go with, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, one of the things it basically, um, what's it called, states from the outset is that a story always needs development, but not every character needs development. And, right. and that's something that's something that you have to keep in mind, right? Yeah. The protagonist doesn't always have to be the one who's getting developed. The protagonist can be the agent of change often. Um, yeah. That's called a flat arc, which is um, somewhere in this book right here. Um, but the idea being that if the world around him changes, the protagonist can stay still. Like Forrest right. Gump, good example, right? Yeah. The world around him changes, but he stays still. So you still have to get that contrast. A normal story, the protagonist changes while the world around him stays still. You know, mm-hmm. But you know, it, it just discusses lots and lots of different alternative strategies to writing stories and such. And it's just an excellent book all around. Uh, last one. Last one. Oh, this is this is just a copy of Simpsons Confidential by Mike Rice. Springfield, Con- uh, Springfield Confidential, whatever. Um, what's it called? It's about it's about the Simpsons history, their production, the writing. You know, a lot of the troubles that happen happened with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it called? Actually, troubles actually, troubles like Matt Groening's association with Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I didn't actually know about that. Um, but flew on the Lolita once go, Express, since since uh massage. since the book is signed, I think I should keep this once it go because it's 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 signed to me and I can't I can't give that away because it's personal. Amazing. Well, that's it. That's all the stuff you're that's leaving in my place. So, um, tell us what you're gonna break in and steal in the comments below, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Actually, I think I'll keep that character arcs book.